Why, oh honey, it makes me feel like twice the man I used to be. Wild honey, wild honey. Okay, so today we're gonna take a look at uh, the harmonic oscillator. It's a very popular uh, physical phenomena, happens in most life situations. Think of it as a mass on a spring, it behaves as a simple harmonic. Uh, a particle around the circle behaves like a simple harmonic. If you look at it from the side, the particle goes back and forth. So this is simple harmonic and we also have it in quantum mechanics. And we know that F equals MA, right? So F, that's the force equal to the simple harmonic force, which is minus K, where K is the spring constant times the mass. I mean times x. Uh, minus k times x. The minus is a restoring, uh, restoring force equals ma, right? So mass times velocity. I mean acceleration. And the, and we have a, we have here a, a differential equation. We know the solution of it is x of t equal some constant a times the sine of square root of k divided by m times time plus some constant b times the cosine of square root of k divided by mass times time all right and uh, let's define the new variable Let's call it omega. It's defined by the square root of k divided by m. And this omega is the harmonic oscillator. The potential is v of x is equal to 1 half times k, spring constant k, times x squared. But of course, there is no such a perfect simple harmonic oscillator. Uh, if you stretch this so far, the spring is going to break. And typically, Hooke's law fails long before the points, this point come. So, this here is approximation. This potential function is approximation given by a Taylor, uh, Taylor expansion. Taylor curious okay so this this Taylor expansion the true the true uh, potential is given by some initial potential that's usually a constant V of X naught plus the first derivative at that point right times the difference not plus the second derivative I mean one half times the second derivative at that point the value of that of second derivative at that point times uh, x minus x naught square and then higher order terms right if we look at this Taylor series expansion, the first part is, is constant, so it doesn't really affect our force. The second part is the first derivative, which is zero at a minimum. And if you look at our potential function, it's a parabola, right? So, so this here, at this point, this is the minimum. The first derivative is zero. So what really matters is the third term. The, thir the, for the fourth term also matter but compared to the second one, we can ignore it. We can approximate it to be equal to zero compared to the, to the third term. So now we have uh, we have our potential function v of x equals one half approximately equal one half second derivative around x naught times x minus x naught square okay so the 
for our quantum problem is to solve the Schrodinger equation for this for this following potential v of x equals one half mass times omega square times x square so this these two things are the same thing so this is our potential function and our job now is to solve the Schrodinger equation for this potential if you remember what is the Schrodinger equation is h the Hamiltonian times psi equals e times psi and the Hamiltonian is given by minus h bar square divided by 2m times the second partial derivative of x plus some potential potential function of x so now plugging this back here we have the Schrodinger equation minus h bar square divided by 2m uh, second derivative of psi with respect to x plus one half mass times angular frequency square times x square times psi equals e times psi so now our job is to solve this monster for psi and we have to find the the, the e values the energy values we're gonna use two methods the first one is gonna be algebraic the al algebraic method and the second method is gonna be analytical method and these gonna be in two separate videos so this is the setup for the harmonic oscillator and the next video we're gonna solve it in the algebraic, algebraic method